one thing that I have kind of reasoned with or like come to um, come to realize is that certain AIs are good at certain things there. And, and I think this is going to continue. I don't, I don't, I am not in this camp that there's going to be this like one app that does everything for you. There might be one app that says they can do everything for you, but I think that there's going to be a lot of maybe hundreds of different AIs that will be very good at certain things, right? Some AIs will be good at learning. Some will be good at writing marketing material. Some will be good at images. I mean, we're already kind of seeing that, but ChatGPT is is sucking up a lot of the airtime around just general purpose text-based AI. And, you know, I think they're introducing some more like multi modalities as well, which I think are going to be very, very good. But I think also that there's going to be good audio AIs, there's going to be good um, uh, video AIs. I think it's just going to be a lot. They might, um, some of them might be powered by the API sitting in behind some of them. But in general, um, I, you know, in general, there's going to be a lot of variety. Okay. So in terms of like how I'm using ChatGPT and Claude, that's what I want to specifically get into. So Claude is an um, AI tool developed by Anthropic, which is was created by someone who was at um, OpenAI for a time and, and left. And they've built an incredible tool, incredible tool. And the way that I use it mostly, I use it mostly is for coding tasks. Like they are hands down better at coding uh, than ChatGPT is. Coding tasks are um, exceptional in here, okay? And you know, this is like, this is not just me. This is this is a general feeling out there that it is very very good for code. Now the other thing that they, I just want to show you here. I want to show you that they do really really well. Is the the UI of Claude is very very good, okay? So I just want to try find data visualization tool. Here we go. Okay, so they have what a a version of um, a version which is a bit different to ChatGPT, and that they have this um, area in the UI which they call artifacts, and artifacts are a way to actually, and particularly this is great for code, right? Is that you can actually see what the code is doing. In ChatGPT, it doesn't actually have that, right? So you'll see here that I was just like I'm trying to build this mini web app and. I wanted to, uh, it, it was around a, a data pipeline mock-up tool. And I um, was able, I was asking for the code and I, I want to actually put this into Replit and I want to actually try and mock up a front end um, for this application, just see how how quickly I can do it. So it built, it built all the code for me in the back, uh, in the background here, which is incredibly handy. And the code like usually works. And you know that because it can, it creates a preview for you. Like it actually is rendering that code in some way. So you can have some confidence that when you put that into a, um, a code editor, that it is actually going to render something. It might not be um, exactly the same, but it's going to render something. Like in a lot of cases, it's pretty similar, by the way, but uh, the, I don't think it's a guarantee there. See, this is something that ChatGPT just does not have, right? So in terms of for, for anything code related, this is fantastic, right? It's democratizing the ability to create very simple web apps. And the artifacts UI experience is, is, is great, right? Like you can click through and you can see, you can start with one version, you can go to the next version. And if you click out here, you can see um, like what content you added and you can add other context to the conversation as well. So you can actually start something and then bring it in here later to, as a new starting point for taking your app to the next level, for example. I did also hear very soon, um, I did. I think they actually are now op, um, offering this to enterprise customers, is that you can actually connect up GitHub to, you, you, they've worked, they've got the functionality to connect GitHub to Claude. So at the moment, like there's a lot of copying and pasting, particularly into um, certain um, code editors, but soon you'll be able to actually run edits within Claude, which I think is a natural evolution of, of, of the way things are going and push it immediately to GitHub and then that can flow onto your application, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I've been using this to mock up tons of things and a lot of people are out there. Like if you go on social media for any period of time and in the AI universe, 
um, on social media, you'll find that every like everyone is doing this, right? Because it really speeds up a lot of the initial work. It gives you the what they call the boilerplate code to get things started, which is which is really really powerful. Okay. In terms of how I'm using ChatGPT, I would say ChatGPT is my has become my quick and dirty text editor is what I would say. It's it's amazing at just like pumping out code after like um, text, like layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of text um, and being able to craft that in certain certain ways for you, right? So with the prompt that you ask, um, it can just come up with, with text very, very fast. And so if you look at like a lot of the um, things that I do, they're just very quick and dirty. Give me this, you know, and it comes up with an idea. Sometimes I come for um, certain help, particularly with images. I like the images interface, like copying and pasting images into here and then writing simple things like this. Like it's a, it's a very simple task. It's like it's a it's an assistant for any random task that I could that I th could think of that has some sort of te text aspect to it. Right. So. Um, Yeah, I was using it for some trying to figure out some spreadsheet um, formula that might be able to help me there. JavaScript error. Um, yeah, some text for our platform. So yeah, that, 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 that's where I think it's it's really really good. Um, and ChatGPT at the moment allows for a, like on the paying subscription allows for a lot more. Like Claude is very limited in terms of how many queries you can make before they turn off, even with a subscription, like I have a subscription to both. Um, I think ChatGPT feels like it feels like unlimited now. It's really unlimited. I mean, you can just keep going and going, and going. But Claude, like I find myself actually thinking very hard about what I'm going to ask and being more detailed because I know I'm going to run out of credits, which is which is really annoying. If, if they allowed me to pay for more credits, if I wanted to go over, I actually would. But for some reason, I bet you it's a compute issue. I bet you it's, it's something to do with a computer, some 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 sort of server backend server um, limitations. I would say. You know, I, I would I would pay for more qu queries. I honestly would. Um, but in any case, I'm just more thoughtful about what I ask in here because I can quickly run out, um, quickly run out of them. There are a lot of like open source tools that um, that you can use that that are connecting to the same model in a lot of cases. Um, so you can get past those limitations. Um, but you know, sometimes it's just easy to use use the out of the box tool that they provide. Um, these these two companies, I feel are becoming like an operating layer. They're an opera like if you if you just step back and think about it more deeply, they're, they're like an operating intelligence layer which is sort of going to start underpinning business it's going to underpin society right because it's it's going to be so easy to interact with it you know you, you you can already interact with it via voice you can already interact with it via images um, via videos via audio via text via typing so just the ease in which you can connect to it it's going to become like an everyday um, operating um, level of intelligence, which we'll all be able to access. But they've, they, 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 they return in different styles. They have different attributes and they're not going to be the only ones. They're not going to be the only ones. I, I definitely believe that, you know, there's, there's open source projects out there um, that have different UIs in them. I think, I think, uh, you know, and there's going to be different tools that, that um, are basically sitting on top of those core models that offer other um, optimizations on top of them that, that that will add a lot of value as well. So they're becoming this sort of base layer. And then I think a lot of good things are going to be built on top of them, kind of like how the operating system is a base layer for a lot of the software that got built on top of them, right? These two models and these two tools are becoming that base layer of intelligence that a lot of tools and apps are going to be built on top of them. It's, and I think it's up to us to actually build those. Like, I think, I think that there's um, more opportunities for the enterprising individual now to build on top of that layer than there ever has been before. Um, and we already know that they're, they're pretty smart and 
that, that that layer is very smart it's getting smarter like that the intelligence is getting better and it's upon our, upon those who want to invest the time is like how can you build on top of that how can you make um, um take that base and extend it even further customize it for a certain niche customize it for your own workflow within your business um customize it to create a business like there, there, there's tons of opportunities there okay hopefully that was informative gave you a few ideas might round, round, round off there, I think. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's just given you um, some good inspiration around um, ways that you can use these tools and, and maybe ways you can extend these yourself. Thanks. Talk to you soon.